Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we're on episode number 56. And if you didn't follow yesterday's episode, we were learning about the email field module. And we weren't only going over what the email field module did, we're actually going through the code and figuring out why it works the way it does and learning how it interacts with the field API in Drupal 7 to actually work the way that you know that it works based on the previous episode of Daily Dose of Drupal, episode number 42, and probably your uses for the module, which I'm guessing you may have had if you've worked on a few Drupal websites. Last time it went a little long, so we'll try to keep it a little shorter this time, but we basically got down to this hook field formatter info, and we're learning about field formatters. So we're going to go ahead and get started. But first, you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, or you can go over to codekarate.com and sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. Okay, so field formatters and hook field formatter info. As we did last time, we pulled it up, and it exposes field API formatter types. This is listed in the Manage Display section, and as you can see, there are three formats here. And as I mentioned before, I sometimes like to change code if you're not sure what it does, and that's a good way to figure out and be able to tell how it's interacting. You'll notice nothing changed there. Okay, so we'll take a look. We'll refresh again just to make sure. And again, although I did change the label here for default email link, it still is not showing up. So the next solution is let's go ahead and clear the cache. Let me go ahead and get to this Drupal site. and I'll use Josh to clear the cache. Now if I come back to this page, you can see that the asterisks I added are now showing up. And that's just a lesson that some things are dependent on the cache, so they actually are cached. In this case, this field formatter info, this hook field formatter info, info information is actually cached. So by clearing that, it was able to show up. It should be able to show up correctly again. You'll notice it still has the asterisks. Go ahead and clear the cache. Refresh the page, and it will go away. Okay, the next step. Let's actually figure out what these are doing. So this hook field formatter info, this corresponds with this hook field formatter view. The hook field formatter info hook actually defines which to show in that list, so what formatters are available. And this hook field formatter view will actually define how to display this by building a renderable array. And you can check out some previous episodes of Daily Dose of Drupal to learn about renderable arrays, or you can, of course, find plenty of information on drupal.org. So as you can see, there are three formatters here and one conditional formatter that I talked about last time. Each one of these, for instance, email default, corresponds to a case statement in this hook field formatter view. So if you selected email default, it's going to use this case statement. If you selected email content or contact, it'll use this one and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this uh, this piece of content. I'm going to actually add a valid email address here and save it. And you will notice that if I go to this page, there is it says contact person by email. And that is because I'm using this email contact form formatter. If I use the default one and go ahead and save it and refresh this page, you can see that it creates a mail to link as you, if you look down in the bottom left corner and that is created by this section right here so as you can see it uses this mail to link we can go ahead and 
add some extra text here just to make sure that we know how it is working. So I'm just going to add a little bit of text out in front and I'll refresh it. You can say now it says email shane at codekarate.com. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. The email contact formatter goes through. So all, all this one does is it sets element delta to a renderable array of markup. And then it goes ahead and it returns this element. So it's returning this renderable array or render array. And if you want to look at what all of these parameters are, you can of course hop over the documentation. It's going to give us some more information. The first is entity type, which is the actual type of entity. In this case, they use object type, but it's the same thing. Display type is the name of formatter to use, so that's important to know. This display variable at the end has a type item in the array and this type item is going to correspond to one of these hook field formatter info items that were declared up above. So we're going to go ahead and just create a new one just to show how it works and ours is not going to be anything realistic but that you'd probably use in an actual module but it's just going to show an example. So email Example. So as you can see, I'm just I just copied the previous one, and I created a, another item in this hook field formatter info array, this formats array that gets returned. If I save this, hop over and clear the cache, and I hop back over here. you'll notice now I have my email example format. I'm going to save that. But before anything is going to actually work, I'm going to need to define a case statement for that. So case email example. And I'm going to follow the same format as it shows above and I'm basically going to loop through all the various items and for each item what this allows you to do is there could be multiple uh, that this delta value there could be multiple email addresses for this field some fields allow you to define multiple items in this case it's only one but there could be multiple so you need to be able to handle that option and we're going to just keep it really simple and as I said before this wouldn't actually be something you would use but you can at least see how it works and then we're going to we'll go ahead and just add that email address It's going to be some extra text here. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to refresh this page. Now it says my example email formatter is, and then it has my email address. Like I said before, not really a real life use case, but you can see how easy it is to add an additional hook field formatter, or an additional field formatter, I guess. The important thing to note is Although I just showed you you can do this, this isn't the correct way to actually add an additional formatter. You can actually implement your your own hook field formatter view and hook field formatter info in your own module and not actually have to modify the email field module. And that is in fact the way you should do it. So this code here would actually need to be broken out in its own module just because you don't want to actually modify contributed modules if there's easy hooks that allow you to interact with them. Otherwise you'll have update problems and it's just not the best way to do things. 
However, it does show you what the module is doing and how you can interact with it. So the next step, we'll go ahead and look at hook field widget info. And we'll follow the same pattern as before and look up and see what hook field widget info does. You can see it exposes field API widget types. That might not exactly tell you what it does, but we'll go ahead and take a look. So this defines or returns an array email underscore text field and it gives it a label of text field. It, the field types that it applies to is email because that's the email field that we are creating or that's getting created up above and the settings is a size of 60. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. If you come back to manage fields you can see this widget shows up as text field. If I change this text field 2 for instance and I refresh you'll notice that now it says text field 2 here and you can of course add additional widget types there just like we added formatter types so I can create a second one that could do something else for instance so you have text field 2 well, it doesn't seem to want to show multiple for some reason. Interesting. go ahead and make sure we clear the cache maybe that's the cause of the problem and you'll notice it of course was so important note when in doubt you may want to try clearing the cache again we're not going to modify the original module just know that you can play around with that and see how that works the settings form is actually the form that you will see if you go into field settings well actually not field settings and go into the edit and this here corresponds in this hook field widget settings form which we'll take a look at first but it's going to correspond to this form in some way So we take a look at hook field widget settings form. It says add settings to the widget settings form. Okay, pretty pretty straightforward answer, I guess. And it tells you, of course, the information. The api.drupal.org page pages for these different hooks, they're going to be extremely valuable when you're trying to learn this information. So what this does is it grabs the widget and the settings. Uh, it does pull out the settings value that's set from up here but it allows you to change the size of the text field it does add a validate to validate it's a positive integer let's go ahead and change the title to size of email text field and we'll take a look refresh you'll notice now down here it says size of email text field it does default to 60 I believe if I change this, unless I've already saved it, I'm not positive that this is going to show up, but we'll go ahead and take a look. Clear the cache. I'm still set at 60. I'm guessing it's because I actually had saved this form before, so it overwrote that default value. But you can, of course, change the default here. It defaults to 60. The next is hook field widget form. Now this one is a little different than the hook field widget settings form. So even though I, th there's a lot of hooks that are getting thrown around for the field API and it's confusing even to me and I've worked with them a decent amount. So don't be don't be worried that it might seem like there's a lot of hooks going around. You can of course always look them up and you can use other modules as examples when you're building your own.
So after you've seen how a couple modules work, you can go ahead and you can pull those examples up as you need them and as you're working on modules that you may need in order to know how those are set up and how they interact with the Drupal core and the Drupal field API. So this returns the form for a single field widget. This one is actually not the settings form here, but if you go to the actual content type and click edit, it is this text field right here. So as you can see, the type is text field, gives it a default value, which is going to be pulled in from the items array that is passed in using the correct delta so you can use multiple email fields or multiple instances of one email field and it pulls in the correct size gives it a prefix and a suffix as well so if we went ahead and for instance commented out the default value then when we refresh this page you can tell that there is no default value here. So although I didn't go, then that's really it for the, all the field API stuff. It does some other things with allowing you, or with the hook menu and the form API. We're not going to go through that because it, this has already went on for quite a while. The field API, as you can tell, there's a lot of hooks to implement. However, if you look at the amount of code, each hook does not actually contain a lot of code so you can actually take a look at it go through it find out what each line of code is doing don't be afraid to for instance in this case if we're going back to the widget type or let's actually go to manage display and let's go to default email link okay so that is set up right and let's go to actually view this don't be afraid to use some print statements or debugging statements to actually for instance in this case I'm going to display the items don't be afraid to go ahead and add your debugging statements or and look through what's getting passed as you can see there's one item it's an array, it's the delta of it is zero, and it's this email address. So as I said before, don't be don't be worried about changing the code or playing around with it when you're learning because that's just I've I've found at least personally that's the best way that I learn is actually digging into the code, changing things, figuring out what I can do to improve the code, what I can do to break the code, and all different kinds of fun things to really learn how the module is interacting with Drupal. That's it for this time. Keep in mind as you go through this module and other modules, there are issue queues on Drupal.org for this module and other modules. And maybe you will be able to find bugs, fix bugs, post patches, and overall just help the Drupal community pr by pr promoting better modules and increasing the quality of the code and just all around making modules in Drupal even better. So keep that in mind as you're going through this and as you're learning. It's never too early to try to contribute and most of the time you'll find other developers very helpful in helping you get started. If you have any questions, as always, you can contact me on Twitter. You can use CodeKarate.com, which I urge you to subscribe to the newsletter. You can send me an email. You can see the email right there. Go ahead and just send me an email if you have any questions. I try to answer Every question that I get, I can't always do it, but I will give it my best attempt and I will try to get back to you. If I don't get back to you in the first few days, don't worry. Sometimes, especially around the holiday season and e-commerce shops getting launched, it's been a little bit hectic, but I will get to you. Don't worry. And I will talk to you again next time, and thank you for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal.